Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use reinkers in four different ways, and I will compare two types of reinkers so you can see the different results. I've prepared this video and another one for the current Fortnite challenge at Paperazzi blog. This time is about reinkers. Okay, let's get started. We'll be using Vintage Photo Distress, the Oxide and the original version. For this first tip, I'm going to use chalk paint, the acrylic fresco paint. I'm spreading it into my craft sheet with a palette knife and then I'll put a drop or two of the different ink on each puddle of paint. Smudge it and then pick it with my card. And I'll repeat the same with the other ink. This one is the Distress Oxide Reinker. Same thing. Lift it and put it there. Now it looks brown, but now I'm going to heat set it. And you'll see that, surprisingly, it changed color into pink. It's so weird. But I'm going to make it react with water. Because although it's there and it's kind of dry, it will still react. As you can see. And I'm also going to get my piece of cardstock and put it into my surface, which I've also put some water into. And make it react and react and react until I get this, well, distressed look that you normally get for some backgrounds. So we can call this technique like a pastel ink oxide or a pastel ink distress thingy. <laughs> I don't know. How would you call it? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you have a better name. So I'm just doing the same process over and over, adding some splashes on water, heat setting, more water, more dipping, and so on and so forth, until I actually get the result and the background that I like. And as you can see, the, this is the same color ink on both sides, but one, the Distress Oxide, which is on the left, is lighter than the actual regular Distress. One is translucent, the regular, and the other one is opaque, the Distress Oxide. In cleaning my surface, you can see how easily this craft mat gets cleaned. I love it. This is by Paparazzi. I'll put the link below. So now, just a little drop on top of my craft sheet, and then some cut and dry foam. What I'm going to do next is deciding where I will place some city. I'm just going to stencil through this stencil by Darcy, and then I'm going to apply some buildings on the background. There you go, that's it. And now, on the other side, going to do it with a Distress Oxide Rainker ink. As you can see, it's a bit more opaque. That one. And again, it has some sort of more, I don't know, lighter color. But they look pretty similar in terms of effects. Okay, my third technique is going to be just not really the drinkers. <laughs> I'm just going to apply their like ground. So I'm going to use some grunge paste through that part of the stencil, which is a cobweb. And as you can see, I just masked a line there to create like a flat surface. Here, well, uh, I covered it with some tape, right? And the tape was a bit wet. So I caught a bit of ink removed from the buildings. But I don't know, it likes, I like the touch. It adds it very nicely anyway. And same will happen on this one. But I don't mind. It looks more vintagey. Now I'm heat setting it, make sure that it's completely dry for my next step. Which will be again using grunge paste. But this time I'm going to put some rats there. They're so cute. So, two little pieces of crunch paste, and now I'm going to apply the ink on top of that. Like two drops on each, more or less. And I'm mixing it very well. So, as you can see, rinkers can be used as well to just add some color onto your texture base. 
and here I'm adding one rat. It's so cute! And check out the color. It becomes so dark. It's so different from the beginning, isn't it? So let's try now with the other ink, which is the Distress Oxide. Make sure to shake it, <laughs> that's very important. So now I'm mixing it very well, and I will apply it through the other rat. It's so cute as well. <laughs> this stencil is by Darcy, and is the PS115. You heat set it, and then it becomes dark darker, but not as dark as the other one, as you can see. Okay, so now I'm going to add just a little bit of ink with the sponge dauber that I had before, the cut and dry foam, on the edges and on top of the grunge paste and the rat, just to add a bit more dimension. Now I'm going to assemble the cards. I'm using there some crunchy paper between my card and between a piece of cardstock and I'm deciding that I like it turned so I'm just tearing it apart with my fingers and I'm doing two, one for each rat but then I decide that for the dark rat I like the crunchy paper to be kind of crumbled so I'm going to do that I'm going to crumble the paper only on one of them. And as you can see when you do that on the crunchy paper, which is a wax paper, the creases that you get become, well, very obvious <laughs> and they change in color. So it adds a very interesting touch to the project. and I'm flattening it out, and that's how I will mount everything. And the other one will stay flat. I want to add some more edged edges, and then I'm applying just the regular Distress Vintage Photo. And in this case, I'm going to apply it on both cards. I'm not going to just use one ink on the one, and then the other ink on the other just going to use the regular distress on both just to give them a little bit of coherence although they are already matching but I'm going to do it this way and to finish my cards I decide that I would like to add some touches like a quote or something and because one is light and the other one is dark I'm going for some stamps by Alison Bomber, the EAV12. I'm going to pick, if there is light, there shall be darkness, something like that. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp it. And I was planning to use archival, but I thought, what the heck? I'm going to use some ink there. So I'm going to create my own ink pad with some cut and dry felt, which is the actual base of the inks from Tim Holtz. I'm just applying a little bit of ink there, not a lot, and I'm pressing it down with my palette knife to make sure that it gets into the felt. And now I'm just using the felt on top of my rubber stamp, and as you can see, it perfectly stamps. So I've just created an ink pad with a reinger, which is kind of <laughs> its use, right? I mean, you're supposed to use it to basically load your ink pads, but you can create your own as well. So now I stamp it twice because I wanted to get enough margin on the two sentences that I wanted. So one is going to be if there is light and the other one is going to be then there is darkness. And I will add those stars there as well. So I'm just deciding where I put it and I will add that star through. Those stars have like, well, pointy bits, right? So I need to press to kind of make the holes, but this is smoothy, heavy cardstock, so it's very thick. So I need a needle to actually make the holes, and I'm using that cut and dry foam as my base, so I don't destroy my craft sheet or my <laughs> table. 
and then I will squeeze in that sentiment under the star and use some glue as well. I'm edging those edges to make it more vintagey and I'll repeat the same on the other side. So again I'm pressing it against that foam to mark my holes and I put it in there. So now just some glue and we just need to stick everything together. I started with a small glue um, runner but then I moved on to my ATC gun. I'm making sure that I close my stars on the back so th they have those pins and then you just need to bend them and that's it and then I'm going to mount everything together so the cardstock on top of the crunchy paper and the crunchy paper on top of the other cardstock and that's my sandwich <laughs> and I'll repeat the same for the other one and really there's no much more to explain so these were my experiments today as you saw I used the same ink color but different types the distress oxide the regular one which is not opaque it's translucent and then it becomes darker and then the distress oxide drinker which became lighter and it's actually opaque and as you will be seeing in the next pictures that they have for some close-ups you can compare the two and see that they are very pretty similar but well nice <laughs> each of them so if there be light then there is darkness and here are my rats i hope you like this video and that you've discovered different ways of using your reinkers so feel free to try yourself just grab whatever ink you have whatever reinker and you can try these techniques or any others that you like you want to share your tips and comments on how would you use them just leave me a comment below give me a thumbs up if you like it and you can also search for the other video that i did on this subject just to use it for watercolor purposes and of course visit the paper artsy blog for more inspiration we will be two weeks doing this so just be there and visit it it will be nice thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one bye